KDOW. KDOW. Streaming now on smart speakers and radio.com. The views and opinions expressed by Rob Black and his guests are not necessarily those of KDOW or its management owners or advertisers and should not be construed as legal tax or investment advice. Always consult with the appropriate advisor before making any investment or financial planning decision. Insightful. Informative. Irreverent. We're ready. 1220 KDOW presents Rob Black and Your Money. Your source for breaking news, market updates, and successful investment strategies for the 21st century. Sounds like a great program. Getting you to retirement in today's market. So let's get on with the show. Taxes, family finance, insurance, the economy, technology, media, and entertainment. Rob is talking about it with you at 800-516-1220. So call in. We'll chat and uh, have some fun. Now to start your day with the latest news and market commentary. Here's Rob Black on the Bay Area's business leader, 1220 KDOW. I'm Rob Black sitting in the air chair today talking finances with you. Thanks for listening to the show. I think we had high hopes that we would have COVID behind us by the fall. You remember, if you've been listening to the show, one of the things that shocked me the most in March was Gavin Newsom said, we will not have if live events in California. There will be no football. There will be no sports in California until at least Thanksgiving. I, I don't think that was a line in the sand. I think that was a, a thought out loud. I was like, whoa. Um, I think we all thought this would be about the time that we're seeing things get back to normal. And the Dow dropped 600 points today. Boom. On fears of rising coronavirus cases could slow down economic recovery. I've said it once, I've said it a million times, I try not to exaggerate it when I say that. Um, it feels like we're getting nowhere with this. We're just, you know, we're staying alive, we're, we're getting, cutting down the death rates, we're, cu- we're extending people's lives. We're, there's some positives for sure as far as fighting it. But it feels almost like a forest fire now that's been, is this forest fire been going on for seven more months? Are there still more people to die? The answer is yes. So the Dow is dropping on that just dismal reality, for lack of a better word. I love the phrase for an economist is a dismal scientist. <laughs> I just like using the word dismal when talking about a class of people. So stocks are falling sharply. I think we're getting fatigue. And the good news is hope is around the corner. We got stimulus fatigue. Hope is around the corner. Washington knows this has to get done. It'll get done. Will it get done in the Congress uh, before the end of the year, the ones that get voted out? Will they come back? Will they care? Will they give a damn? Typically, not a lot gets done, but this is not a typical time. We got election fatigue. That's about to get a resolution. So we got stimulus coming. We got election results, I think, coming. Notice how, and we have positive news on the coronavirus coming. But for today, we're down. And this might be my last dip until we start solving some of those and the markets have the ability to hit new highs. So I'm, I'm doing some shopping today, maybe on stocks. I'm not telling you to. I'm, it's, I'm looking for a shopping list. I'm putting it together. I'm putting on my, my, my jacket and, and going out shopping. Doesn't mean I'll buy something, but I'm bringing my wallet with me. Coronavirus cases have risen by a record average of 71,832 over the past week. Coronavirus-related hospitalizations are up 5% or more in 36 states. I think there's going to be a call for lockdowns, the likes we've seen uh, recently now in Chicago. Will a president, if the election is behind us, make a mask mandate? Will they? We don't know. There's a lot of uncertainty is what I'm trying to get at. Microsoft reported better than expected earnings and revenue for the previous quarter. Stock's a little bit off today, but it's seeing strength in its field uh, as more enterprises move to the cloud. They've done well with that. Boeing reported quarterly loss that's narrower than expected. More importantly, their CEO got a chance to say, we're going to put the 737 MAX behind us soon. It, the chips are falling in place. We're going to get it. We're going to get the ban lifted. I think they're going to have to change the name of the 737 MAX. 
Because every time you get on a plane and the stewardess or steward says, ladies and gentlemen, please look at the information card in front of you. You see the word 737 Max here and you go, isn't this the plane that crashed twice? So they're going to have to rename it something like the, the 737 Easy. Easy, easy, pleasy. <laughs> something that sounds a little, or maybe call it margarita or something, something that sounds happier, right? It's 737 Max. Isn't that the plane? Yes, yes, yes. GE's up 7% today. Company reported stronger than forecast revenues and a surprise adjusted profit. First Solar also posted quarterly numbers that beat analyst expectations, sending its shares up 10%. Yep, COVID hospitalizations. See, I, I keep going into dire mode, huh? Dismal, dire, bleak. COVID hospitalizations rise in 36 states. Uh, it's almost, I'm, this is wrong. This is wrong for me to say I'm going to let my producer know if he wants to get up it. It's almost the states that laughed at the bigger states that were getting COVID kind of it came back to a little karma on them because it's hitting every state. There is no hiding. 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air today. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about. Real estate fintech, CoreLogic, is receiving multiple potential bids. Um, it's nice when you're a data company in the 21st century. Property data, data and analytics company, CoreLogic, has received multiple potential takeover bids. Multiple parties interested in pursuing a deal with CoreLogic include private equity firms. Um, data is big, and it will blow your mind when you start looking at the gains the world had in you know fighting infectious diseases and creating wealth and creating educational systems. And you always see it like really, really slow, but the computational power and using data analytics against us—it's crazy po- uh, powerful. And I sound like a Fox TV show with Bradley Whitmore as he fights the artificial intelligence that he created that now wants to kill the world. Bob Iger says Disney bought Fox because of value it adds to streaming service. And the light bulb went off. So I like Iger enormously as a CEO. Some people wanted him to run for president. As a CEO, I think he's made some public social faux pas that are unbelievable. But as an investor, I think he's a great CEO. Fox was an amazing deal for Disney. Maybe five years too late because Netflix has had this amazing run. I was talking to my producer this morning and he said something along the lines of, wow, Netflix, because we were talking about a Netflix special. I wonder if there'll ever be another Netflix I'm like, well, Disney? I think Disney could do it. Disney has the money. Apple has the money. And it's not intimidating. It's not, but Apple could just acquire Netflix and then they could be the Apple Flex. That would be a powerful company. Disney could do the same thing. But um, that would be too powerful of a company, right? So, because Disney's already bought Fox, 21st Century Fox. They got Simpsons, they got National Geographic. As I get older, I do linger on the National Geographic channel a little bit longer. The opportunity to buy Fox um, just really fell into Disney's lap. And for Disney Plus, it's been a win win. Big old winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, Iger's, he's focused on Disney Plus. That's the best thing, I, I, that's the only thing I can tell you right now. So he's kind of in. Uh, victory lap mode of his career. So, and what will he do next? It's, it's interesting. Like when Howard Schultz was in victory lap of his career, people were like, he's going to run for president. He's going to run for president. And he, I think he seriously looked at it. And I think he figured he didn't want to be the guy who diluted the vote. So he wanted a focused Democrat versus a focused Republican. And he didn't want the socialist side or the capitalist side of either party to be featured with another let's point fingers at each other party I like Howard Schultz um, I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money investing and more find me online at robblackshow.com and you focus financial like you 
Your comments and questions are always welcome. Visit Rob Black online at robblack.com. Now, back to Rob Black and your money on AM 1220 KDOW. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money investing more. Fits and tantrums. Band that I've never made the jump to actually see live, but I would like to because they look like it would be a fun show. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really digging the vibe of drive-in concerts. I get it, but I don't know if I really want to do that. The energy vibe would be totally different being next to a human being versus being next to another car. But I get the safety issue. A third of hotels in the United States could go under due to the coronavirus pandemic. Some 33% of hotel owners expect to hand the keys back to their lender or in a forced sales situation. COVID hitting a resurgence, hitting all-time highs is not good for industries, especially the mom and pops in a scenario like this. Only 32% of lenders were being flexible to hotel hoteliers. Is that the right way to say that? I think it is. Hoteliers. Uh, so there's going to be some bankruptcies. There's going to be some, here's your building back, and sorry it didn't work out, and go ahead and ruin my credit. Most small hotels are expecting a 45 to 60% revenue decline in 2021. 45 to 60 yeah. I looked at the number of points on my credit cards yesterday, and I was like, I can go in on a great vacation very soon. Do-da, do-da. I'm going on a great vacation soon. Do the do-da day. And I'm like, oh, COVID, I guess I'm not. So there's that going on. I'm not going to take this anymore. Elsewhere out there, one of the best things you could do during this time is get c- control on your finances. Today is always a good day to get control on your finances. Do something for yourself financially. Start an account with Acorns, rounds up your credit card investments and throws it into a savings account for you. That gives you exposure to stocks, in my opinion. Um, that's how you can get wealthier right now. Today is a tough day due to COVID. I'm going to look at companies that have lived through things worse than COVID. I'm going to look at companies who've gone through 9-11. I'm going to look at for companies who've done the Y2K bug. Maybe they've lived through Ebola, the swine flu, the bird flu. I'm going to look for companies that have gone through Republican presidents and Democrat presidents. I'm going to look for companies that have gone through all this. All, every question that's out there, I'm going to look for. Um, and if the company's still standing, I'm going to look at a day when the stock markets are down big as an opportunity. So I'm I'm doing a shopping list right now. I'm going to make sure during the times of COVID that like my 401k looks like I want it to. Am I putting in everything I'm allowed to put in? Uh, making sure that my employer is matching my uh, 401k like they're supposed to, that I'm not just trusting the system. I like doing a little bit of financial maintenance um, on a kind of every 90 day basis. So one of the best things that I could look forward to is, and I don't think I'm going to, I don't know where I'm going to fall on this. I've got enough money to retire. At some point in time, I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to walk away from the machinery and be gone, turn it off, and you won't hear from me. It's not yet. I still have to be a role model for some people, and I still have some mentoring to do. Um, Delay Social Security is its one of the most fascinating ideas on retirement because I think we all grew up with a system that said, when you're 60 years old, you'll be able to retire. But if you wait till you're 70, you'll get a bigger, fatter government check from Social Security. We don't hear that part when we're kids. And young adults and teenagers and entering the workforce, we hear, wait, I got to work for 40 years and I can retire and get a watch or something stupid like that? I know you're saying a watch. Is it at least an iPhone or connected to a watch? That's interesting. They didn't go with the eye on it, did they? It's just the Apple Watch. Oh, new AirPods coming in January, it looks like. Right after you spend your money on your kids for the AirPod Pro, uh, Pod Pros, you're like, yeah, yeah, there's a new version. It's going to be different. All right, all right, all right. Speaking of Apple, they're going to report this week. Um, you know the song, High, High Hopes? We've got high, high, I've got high, high hopes for living. 
we have a lot of high hopes on technology right now. And let me just give you a quick example. Microsoft reported just a great quarter. Um, and, and you go, aren't they the company that is sending employees home to work from home? How can they be as doing well? It, it's not possible. They're too big. Uh, they're down 3.7% today. I own shares of Microsoft. What's interesting to note about that is I forgot that I own shares of Microsoft. I bought it way back in the 90s. Um, so I, it wasn't on my blotter. It wasn't on my, like, I didn't put pen to paper on it recently. So every now and then when I say I own it, I'm like, really? And I do. It's actually a pretty sizable position. So it's done well for me only because I held it. I remember earlier this week I was taking a shot at a guy who emailed me, asked about trading. That's a great, this is a great example. Buy a great company and hold it for 20, 30 years and look back on it and go, oh, I did pretty good. So Microsoft down today. They've had a huge run in the last 52 weeks, going from $132 to $230 a share. So now it's gone from 230 down to 205. About 15% roughly will just use that magical number, even though it's not quite right, from its all-time high. 15% from its all-time high. How many times do you think Microsoft is going to go 20% from its all-time high or 30% from its all-time high? Every time I say a larger number, you go less likely, less likely, less likely. I hope 40%. I, I think it could go 40% from its all-time high. That happens in the stock market on a regular basis, and they're a big old stock market themselves at this point in time. With a market valuation, you know, close to two trillion, one and a half, one point five five trillion. So Microsoft told us that you can hit it out of the ballpark, but if we think you're expensive, we're going to ignore you. So Apple's up next on Thursday for the big tech companies. We're going to get Google. We're going to get Amazon. This still, this week still has some room in, left in it, so to speak. If I'm throwing that out there correctly. Um, but if you take a look at the PEs of these companies, it makes no sense. If you take a look at the cash flow of these companies, it makes sense. The amount of cash they're generating, the amount of cash they can reinvest, the amount of cash they can use on buybacks, the amount of companies that use cash on going out and getting acquisitions, the amount of cash they can use to write out a downturn in the economies. It's the, the cash flow is the amazing part about these companies. Oh, and Microsoft has, uh, Christmas coming up with the Xbox. And, We've been stuck <laughs> in COVID, not doing a lot, except for playing video games, getting bigger TVs, upgrading our house, painting maybe a little bit here and there. Um, they're well positioned, to say the least. I'm, I just was about to say something kind of interesting. I was going to say, I'm not going to go out and buy shares of Microsoft. I would if you were to tell me you've got 10, 20, 30 year time horizon. But if you're looking for instant gratification, they just had a blowout quarter. COVID numbers are at the highest levels they've ever been. They've got Congress pretty hyper-focused on the other big tech companies, meaning Microsoft, uh, meaning Amazon, uh, Facebook, and Apple, and Google. Microsoft is the safer play because the government's really not focused on them right now, but they also they didn't respond to blowout numbers. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Find me on at newfocusfinancial.com. Mama said, don't give up. It's a little complicated. All tied up. No more love. Time will be on my side. I don't believe that. Your comments and questions are always welcome. Visit Rob Black online at robblack.com. Now, back to Rob Black and your money on AM 1220 KDOW. CNBC is in crisis mode. So we need to talk with Patrick O'Hare, get him on our bat phone, see if he can calm us down. Patrick O'Hare, briefing.com, long-term friend of the show. How are you? Hey, good morning, Rob. I'm doing okay. I'm like your uh, your lead in in terms of uh, describing a certain network as being in crisis mode. <laughs> and it's interesting because today I'm actually more calm. I'm looking at buying two stocks that I've been waiting for to get through earnings and to get a little bit of a, a whoosh down. And we kind of have it this week. No election certainty. 
no stimulus or stimulus delay, and we had COVID surging. Those things were there yesterday and the day before and the day before in higher markets. So I kind of like that they're loosening the markets right now. But what do you think about those three things? No stimulus, election uncertainty, and uh, COVID surging, because that is the theme of the week, it looks like. Yeah, I, you know, and I think the latter is is what's kind of hitting closer to home at the moment. Um, you know, you've seen such a, a, you know, another parabolic increase in terms of coronavirus cases. And then, of course, now you're hearing about possibility of countries like Germany and France imposing, um, you know, lockdowns again. And, and then you have some targeted measures here in the United States. I mean, here in Chicago, you know, uh, it was just announced by the governor yesterday that, you know, indoor dining has to end uh, because of the higher positivity rate. Um, so, you know, I think what the market has in its head right now is just this notion that um, probably needs to, to rein in some of its, you know, bullish enthusiasm. Some people would call it complacency, but certainly the bullish enthusiasm reigning in a bit here um, because there are some challenges uh, out there as it relates to the high growth expectations that have been uh, helping to boost stock prices here uh, in recent months. But with all the negative that we're having from the th- those three issues, the uncertainty in politics should resolve in a few weeks, a month or less. The coronavirus should start seeing vaccine results, which from what I'm hearing um, should be pretty vaccine. The vaccine won't be that impossible to put together. So it just takes time. So that should start getting some positives. Some of the negatives should be going away sooner rather than later and because we are going to get stimulus. Uh, Congress will either come back in session or it'll be early 2021 sooner rather than later for less damage. But we are going to get some positives. Should people be poised for that, Pat? Well, sure. You know, you can see over the horizon to to, to identify uh, some silver linings, you know, as you have. I mean, you know, the vaccine will come. Um you know, I think that, you know, one of the shifts in the narrative of late, which, again, has contributed to this week's selling pressure, and you may recall, and, you know, I've certainly written about it in the big picture column, is that really we expect there to be a lot of, you know, roller coaster trading activity here, uh, certainly leading into the election. Um, but one of the shifts in the narrative now is, is simply that this notion that uh, the vaccine um, if markets have to get its mind around and a lot of people aren't getting mind around. They won't be probably in the mainstream in terms of availability until, you know, the middle of next year and possibly even a little bit later. Uh, and again, that just kind of feeds back into that point I was making at the top of the interview is just that there is a basis in the market's mind to, to have some doubt right now about the viability of 2021 earnings growth estimates. And a consequence of that is simply to uh, pull back on some risk exposure in highly valued names. And the broader market overall is can be you know characterized as being highly valued. Um, you know, at the end of last week, you're trading at a 40% premium to the 10-year historical average in terms of the forward 12-month PE multiple. Right. Uh, and we've gotten there uh, helped by the persistence of low interest rates and obviously the, you know, the support that the, you know, uh, the Federal Reserve has been providing uh, and, and certainly uh, a lot of hope in terms of the uh, timing of when a vaccine is going to arrive and certainly when there's going to be a, a much stronger earnings pickup. And uh, and uh, so I don't you know. What you've got going on right now, really, is, is it is one of these things. It's kind of like momentum sort of cutting the other way at the moment and that the price action itself is feeding is feeding on itself because you've had uh, undeniably, you know, much better than expected earnings results. But what you haven't had is a, a much better than expected response to those results. If anything, you've had a much worse than expected response. And that's causing some, you know, been some cause for pause for a lot of participants who have been chasing those names higher. Really odd question. And I'm going to ask you like you're my brother. Do you think I'm crazy for wanting to buy stocks today? No, I don't. You know, okay. I mean, it, it, it's kind of, you, you know, it, it's sort of a weird phenomenon within the stock. You know, in, in, in the normal world, right, you like to buy things on sale. You like to buy things at a 
at a right. price that's below the MSRP, uh, well below the MSRP, uh, you know, well below what you might see at a rack rate, you know, what have you. Uh, in the stock market, however, you kind of see this, this urgency to, you know, to chase after stocks that are already at record highs. <laughs> so, uh, and sometimes that does work out, you know, just fine, but, you know, it is nice to see, and Warren Buffett, of all people, always reminds us that he likes days like this, right? You know, he, he, he likes seeing stocks go down because it gives him an opportunity to buy more. And uh, and obviously, he's a very, you know, even at his age now, it will, will remain principled in being a long-term investor. And so, and, and I think that's kind of where, you know, you're getting to, Rob, is just that, you know, you buy on the weakness, um because, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for someone who has a more patient mindset to come in at a lower cost basis, to ride out some of the volatility, and, and then, uh, you know, then reap the rewards over the long term uh, by buying good, solid companies that can thrive in any environment and will, you know, will survive these bouts of volatility. I'm talking to Patrick O'Hare, briefing.com, a service I've used for over 20 years of investing. I want to say it's pushing almost 25 years now, and I think you've been there the whole time. Um, your team has been pretty consistent there. That's worthy of note. But taking a look at your page one, one of the highlights that I, I my eyeballs went straight to was Boeing. Uh, too controversial of a, a company? Uh, is it? How do you feel about the Boeing situation? Because they've got the 737 MAX. They have a defense budget side that's going to be questionable. They still have to get their own infrastructure correct as far as their labor costs, because long-term flights are going to be a little bit muted from COVID. Uh, but we must just be a treasure chest of uh, content for you as far as the, the questions you can bring <laughs> up in your, your writings about them. What are your thoughts on Boeing getting back up in the air? Right. Well, you know, so I, I approach the market from a, from a top-down orientation. And so, you know, what jumps out at me is, is the idea that they still see the need to kind of reduce their workforce and, and continue to cut jobs and get it, um, you know, a lower um, employee base as of the end of 2021. And, and what does that suggest? Well, it, you know, it implies that, you know, demand isn't going to show up like they, you know, once thought it might. Now, that should not be a surprise to anyone right now, um, but it is the reality of the situation. And it also kind of drives home for, for you know, for this analyst anyway, this idea that we've been arguing for a while is, is that you're not likely to see a, a V-shaped economic recovery. It's going to take, you know, a good bit of time before we get back to those uh, pre-pandemic uh, economic levels. And, um, you know, now Boeing obviously has paid a, a heavy price for its own uh, operational shortcomings, you know, particularly as it relates to 737 MAX. It's encouraging to hear that that might be, you know, on the way to, um, you know, approval here. But, you know, at the end of the day, that that might be great. But where's the demand, right? So Boeing is probably going to be sort of stuck in an operational rut for a little bit. Uh, but the worst of its problems are probably behind it. So, again, for someone with, you know, a very long-term you know, mindset, um, there's not a lot of competition for Boeing as it relates to commercial airlines. I mean, Airbus is obviously its biggest competitor. Boeing does have a defense, you know, business as well. Um, you, you know, you might be able to come in here and, you know, just take a, a you know, a small position in the name, uh, you know, as it continues to work through its restructuring. And, you know, and then over time, you're going to see that pick up and travel demand again and airline travel and uh and you know boeing will probably be you know be fine but it's going to be going to take some patience though we've got two minutes exactly left pat o'hare is there anything you're working on that you want to bring to our attention at briefing.com well um well as you know there's there's kind of a big event coming next tuesday (laughs) fair Um, enough (laughs) i don't know if uh if if any of us will know what the outcome of that event is as of next tuesday you know ideally we will um but perhaps not uh in any event um you know the focus of the big picture column you know this week which i'll publish on friday afternoon is is just kind of going to be some scenario planning in terms of you know uh, what areas might do well or, or maybe not as well under a specific outcome scenarios, um, which are tied both to not only who the president will be, but what the shape of Congress will look like. And, um, and so just kind of sort of a little bit of a cheat sheet type of dynamic there, uh, for investors. 
Sounds good. Thanks very much. It's Patrick O'Hare with Briefing.com, a reliable source of domestic and international financial content. It is way too vast for me to get into. There's something that you'll like, whether it be their earnings calendars, their analyst upgrades and downgrades. They've got a technical take on the stock market. They've got a technical take on um, buying and selling stocks. They have a list of, of new companies that are exciting in the IPO market. It's a pretty cool, pretty diverse website. You can spend some time on it every day if you need to. You can find it at briefing.com. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Visit Rob Black online at robblack.com. Now, back to Rob Black and your money on AM 1220 KDOW. Everyone knows my cat. I know you're saying, you got a cat? Uh, It was named Kit Cat. Dog is named 0111. Um, binary it freaks people out when they know that, but it's good. COVID has brought pet adoption to the front hardcore. Parents want our kids to be normal and school's not normal. Playgrounds aren't normal. A puppy, it's normal. Pet adoption rose 60% in the first quarter of this year. Americans are ordering more so than ever during the pandemic and bam, there comes Chewy. At the intersection of pet adoption and online ordering, they sell a wide variety of products, dog beds to medication. They try to set up a loyalty program with you. They try to set up kind of a relationship with you by getting a picture of your animal, sending emails out to 0110110. Don't forget to tell your owner, you want dog treats for Christmas. Great routine. I don't know. I, I gotta imagine it's on the edge of politically correct, but Cheech and Chong, they did a comedy album back in the seventies about two dogs basically sniffing each other's butts. And it just brings a smile to my face because I was like 10 years old when I heard it and it was radical then. It was cutting edge. My father would come into the room and he'd be like, turn that trash off. Sister Mary Elephant. Um, but anyway, two dogs smell each other, but that's what Chewy does to me, right? Many Americans have had a virtual visit with a doctor in the past year. Now, Chewy's launched a telehealth video service for pets. They have a connect with a vet for free for customers who are part of their auto ship program. The auto ship program is you get, my dog likes dog treats. Um, I don't like going to the store. She likes a certain one that lasts a little bit longer than a different one. My dog's a chewer. I know, I know. Good bye. Good bye. Good bye. See ya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't want to take her to the, the vet right now because I'm stressed out. I, doctors come out to the parking lot. They have to do the social distancing. Um, I'm a little freaked out by it. I, she's a young, good, Strapping puppy. So I think she's COVID. I was going to say something stupid. Like she's COVID immune because she's puppy puppy. Um, but no, I shouldn't even joke with that because it's stupid. But the connective vet is a great idea because people like me, I want to do everything online. Um, two shares are up 130% this year, but they've, they've launching this type of program could get, I, I've, I've never done their service, the auto ship. It, you know, I have a dog, but I haven't thought of it that way. Do I really want to do another subscriptions, you know, service for their going to ship me stuff on a regular basis? I, I, I just need to do this. Sometimes I need to go to the store on my own or have a last second decision. But another, but that's consistency. That, that's bold, uh, building loyalty with Chewy big time. So stocks are down sharply today, 750 points. I'm not not saying it because I'm trying to hide from it. I'm not saying it because it's not a big deal to me. 
Oh, now the Dow's down 820 points. NASDAQ's down 347. The S&P 500's down 100. The Russell 2000 is down 39. What's that mean? Nothing. Those are just points. If I were to tell you that everything's down between two and a half to three percent, makes a little bit more sense to you. Crude oil down 4.8 percent. Tanya, the global markets went into the toilet this morning and flushed. Um, across the board, it's red. Gold's down. Silver's down. Uh, Europe, the euro's down. The 10 year treasury bond, that, when you say it's down, it's actually up in interest. More money is going into it. And earlier this week, I was like, wow, we're at 85 basis points on the 10 year treasury bond. And now as the week has gotten a little bit older, uh, we've given that up. I, again, I'm not trying to freak you out, but the slide in the last five days from 86 basis points down to 76, that's telling you the world has gotten a lot more fearful in five days. We're in earnings season. What's next? More COVID news? That's not great. That's not great. Is that all we can look forward to? A contested election where will Militia step up and protect his right to remain in office if he leaves office? Will he ask for it? Will it happen? Will it be clear? Will it be decisive? Um, I don't know. But we'll have some answers soon. So the whole world is concerned, right, in the COVID issues have shut down economically, and rightfully so. It's tragic what we're losing to small businesses and what our kids are losing in real education versus online education. Um, I'm a good teacher. I'm not the greatest teacher ever. There's 10 vaccine candidates in late-stage trials globally. The central scenario that I'm working with trying to explain to people is we should start to lift restrictions spring slash summer of 2021 if these 10 vaccines get some traction underneath them. So corporate earnings won't really recover until six months after that. So if you think in spring or summer, you're thinking end of 2021, start of 2022, before it's a healthy corporate earnings environment, that's a long time to put a faith in the stock market. So I like the fact that we're selling off. People are being rational. People are not being panicked. We're shifting money around. We're putting it into safer issues. Me personally, I'm going to move some cash in the stock market. I like down markets. Again, that may not be appropriate for you. So please know that. Um, but I'm okay with that. Adobe expects consumers could spend an extra $11 billion online, pushing the holiday total to over $200 billion. Wow. We're going to see massive e-commerce growth in an area I thought was more mature than it is. Hot Christmas toy of the year, rainbow corns. Rainbow corns? What could it be better than that? How about cutelitos? Cutelitos. They're little plush stuffed animals. And uh, video game consoles, Xbox and Sony. Big, 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 big this holiday season. I'm Rob Black. Find me online at newfocusfinancial.com or robblackshow.com. Good night. Oh, yeah.